Toronto. Yeah, Oh, okay. And what about you, Nirvana? Now, you're young, Nirvana. How, Nirvana, you're very young. Yeah, I'm 22. Mm -hmm. Turning 23 this Saturday on an August 4th Caravana weekend. Okay. The, the community center is also having a celebration. I'm so glad for them, the great community, our family and friends. <laughs> and we could build the experience for the LGBT. So, what made you come to Toronto? Um, when I was three and a half, um, my parents were splitting up and my mom was moving back to mm -hmm. um, Toronto, where she was originally from, but grew up more off of Toronto, half an hour away in Caledon. And she said that she wanted to give me a proper life that I wouldn't have had because of my sexuality and my gender coming out at a young age. When was the first sexual experience for you? Since you're the youngest one, what was the first sexual experience for you? Was it heterosexual or gay? Um, my first one was actually when I was a little homophobic, shocking me. Um, I got grown up by a lot of stereotypes, typical and like, thrown in my face type of gaze. Mm -hmm. And like, I was confused about my gender at a very young age. But then at the end of the day, I knew that there was someone missing. Mm -hmm. I was a twin, but at the end of the day, I lost the connection with her, but I found a connection with my sexuality and myself, and I found out who I was. Okay. But it started when I was 13, and I'm a 21-year-old. So, Matt, coming to Toronto, when did you start hanging out here? When did you know that Toronto was home to you, uh, and this community was home to you? Me, like, uh, three years ago, I think. Mm -hmm. But, like, I was on a team for 10 years, right? Okay. The only time, like, yeah, yeah. I say for 2006 and 2016, right? I'm still here, right? I'm always whatever, Rob, whatever, right? Okay. And then I tell that right now, what? Okay. Now, Patty, now, you know, we've been friends a very long time, and I know you've been around in the business. And, um, now, what is it that you think Nevada is doing wrong in, in coming to Toronto. Do you, like, what is it that you see? Do you see his path taking the path that you've taken? Or do you do you know her? No, yeah, I met her uh, in the last couple of years. Um, what is she, I, I can't say she's doing anything wrong. I mean, she's working at her own pace. She's working with what she's got. I mean, there wasn't a lot of resources back in the day when I came out, mm -hmm. right, as to as, as to there is now. Right, so I'm not going to sit here and pass judgment or say she's doing anything wrong. She's working with what she feels comfortable working with. Well, can you offer anybody on this panel any advice um, so they don't take the course that you take? So now you said that you dealt in crystal meth. Yeah. Now, how long have you been using crystal meth? On and off for almost two years. Okay. Have you seeked help for this? No. Okay. Now, well, prior to that, I was, uh, I was, I, I was in the, um, I had a crack addiction for 30 plus years, and when I first found out about the crystal, that I, I've been clean almost seven years now of the crack, and I don't use crystal meth daily. I periodically might use it maybe two or three times in a month. No. Harm reduction. Okay. Do you do drugs with others? I do. Okay, and what's the experience that you get out of that? What is it? Is it a social? See, once again, it all depends on the individual, um, where they're at in their life, or what they're struggling with, mm -hmm. could make the trip, you know, not so pretty. Okay. Now, at the end of the day, what is it that you want the people out there to know, Matt, about you and your addiction? Now, are you seeking help at this time mm -hmm. for whatever addiction that you're no. dealing with? I'm not doing it in my age, but I don't want these people here Just doing that fucking I don't want these people doing the crack, that, nothing. Right. Okay, so yeah. he has a very strong yeah. opinion about he doesn't want people doing the crack or the meth. We understand right. that. We don't want any of our friends doing crack of or the meth. Yes. Now, with that being said, <clears throat> what was the first place, Patty, you did drugs? What was the first place? Who introduced you to crystal meth? Um, well, nobody, introduced, nobody introduced me. I was that living at Ecu Homes mm -hmm. on Church in Alexander, 
and I was still smoking crack. Okay. And my my neighbor was smoking crystal meth. Okay. And I said, "What is that?" He said, "It's crystal meth. How do you do it?" He showed me how to do it. But then when I asked him for one, he wouldn't give me one. Okay. But when I offered him money, that mm -hmm. changed the thing. And as soon as I did my first hit of crystal meth, the crack addiction was deleted. Oh, okay. Now, it's um, a very I just wanted to add, it's a very sexual thing, too, amongst the gay community. All right. I find with the crystal meth. So did you find it easier to get the boys with the, with the, with the drugs? It was easier for me to actually engage and communicate with guys instead of, like, backing down or shying away. With the crystal meth, I'm out there. I'm more forward. In engagement. Okay. Now, how much money in one day would you actually spend on drugs? Um, not a hell of a lot, really. Okay. So, uh, well, it depends. I mean, you want me, mm -hmm. you want me, me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, what do you want me, me? Me personally, a forty bag of Tina would last me a couple of days. Okay. Now. Would you share that no, with anybody, no. or just do it by yourself? Yeah. Well, it depends. If you're a hot bottom, then oh. maybe. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> That's amazing. Okay. Now, okay. if you were okay. to see the young children today, what would you tell them about <laughs> drug use and the and the behavior that you actually do <clears throat> part of? Um, what would you tell the young people out there today, or just anybody no. that you see no. are heading down that path? Drink track through, I think twice about getting or starting, uh, mm. whether it be crack or heroin or crystal meth. Mm -hmm. But then again, in the same token, I'm not here to tell anybody anything. Everybody, mm. like I mean, I learned um, I learned the hard way. Mm. Okay. Right? People are going to learn yeah. what they want to learn, I guess, mm -hmm. yeah. when it comes to the drug uh, cartel. Mm -hmm. Now, how often in the last year would you say you've done drugs? Once a week, twice a week, three well, like times a week? Well, like I said, it, 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 it depends. Because there was times where I went like two weeks smoking crystal meth. And then there was like times where I went like a couple months without using. Mm -hmm. So it just, it depends. It varies. All right. So now, do you have a boyfriend? Are, Are you, you in a relationship at the moment? I am. Now, what is this? Is this person also doing crystal meth? Yes, he is. Okay. So the two of you have an understanding. Now, so is you're responsible? You're yes, responsible yes. meth user. Yes, I am. Oh, okay. So I'm, um, how can I say it? Functional crystal meth user. I pay my bills. I pay my cable. I pay my bills. I pay my rent. Mm -hmm. Everything's paid before I even dabble. Now, are you still escorting? Um, no. Actually, I see my sugar daddy twice a month. And that's good enough. Okay. Now, um, how often do you think about? Does this, when, you, when you're actually doing the drugs, do you actually think of having other partners or are you stuck with just one partner? Um, no, my partner has asked me, I mean, we've communicated and engaged with each other mm -hmm. about having threesomes. <laughs> but when it comes down to it, yeah, it it's yeah, not yeah, a good thing. Me. It just yeah, doesn't, it doesn't go. Yeah, now, Nirvana. How much money have you spent on drugs or alcohol? And the, do you use do you use drugs once a week or twice a week? Um, usually, um, actually, two to three times a week. Okay. Now, how much money do you actually spend a week on drugs or alcohol? Um, in a week's time, it'd probably be anywhere from six hundred to eight hundred bucks. And I used to be a massive um addict with some things at a young age due to experiences and life problems but at the end of the day I've cut down by over like three quarters of the way and I'm only at one fourth. Now have and you I'm still proud but I'm no I still have an addiction and I'm gonna conquer it one day. Okay. Have you seeked help for your addiction? Yes. Okay. I have seeked help for my like, addiction. Like, like what did you do? Camp. Where? I went to Cam H also. Mm -hmm. I knew I had an issue, I had mental health issues and physical issues, but at the end of the day I knew I had a problem and I knew what was wrong with me. Mm -hmm. And I fought for my rights to go in though. I had seizures at the time. I broke down and they had to wheel me in and I said I'm not leaving this hospital until I get the answers. No. They medicated me. I had a, a few addictions to the pills though, mm -hmm. but I had a high immune system where sometimes I got affected by those. But it made me a bigger and strong person knowing that I had to fight for something. I know I can make it right. Now, 
how do you feel about other addicts when you're around other addicts how does it make you feel when you see the reaction of the public and they're watching people that they presume are drug addicts or alcoholics because people watching you from a distance only assume because you're in the park I'm gonna be honest I don't do drugs I don't smoke and I drink very rarely so I've never my goal here is to, for my audience to have an understanding about the crystal meth, the alcohol, the sexual addictions that we all sometimes suffer, whether we're away from family, we've lost our family, we've lost our job, we've lost our pride, we've, we've been hurt in relationships. These are. This is why I'm doing this show, is because I want it to be an educational show um, and I want people to understand that we are serious about cleaning up the community and getting the people that need help the help that they need. Yeah. It's my job to do that. Good for you, Stephanie. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, Matt, did you, you had a wife, right? Did you have a wife or were you ever married? Let me ask me. Okay. Were you ever married? <laughs> oh, nobody ever asked you. <laughs> now, Nirvana, since you're the young one, do you have a? Are you in a relationship? Well, I've actually been in a few. I've recently, only within the last three years, been in a gay relationship okay. with a gay, gay partner. I've had bi curious coming out. If not straight men approach me and have relationships, if not females, I have an ex-wife and one ex-fiance. Mm -hmm. Now, you've heard of CAMH. We've all heard yeah. of CAMH. Uh, now, has theory. any of you been there? No. Now, what I, is your experience you had with CAMH? Um, I had two experiences with CAMH. Mm -hmm. The first time was when I was signing myself in as a patient, checking myself in, and defending my own rights and health, knowing I had issues and seizures, and finally overcoming my problems with addiction and drug use of alcohol and other substances and telling them I need help. And the second time was when I got put in and accused of something that never happened. I fought it in court and you know what, it came out mm -hmm. that it was nothing what it was supposed to be but due to the medication and stuff that they thought I was going into an epileptic seizure and I made it out of it. Okay, after well, that's going that's great. That's great. Now, Patty, mm -hmm. um, now have you? Did, this is more of a deeper question for me to ask because I just think that the audience would like to know. Now, to support your to habit damn. in no. drugs. No. Now, when you weren't working or you didn't have any source of income, how did you get money for drugs? Well, like I said, I mean, when I was a teenager, it was weed and acid, and it was, the, you know, you got your allowance from your parents, but, I mean, overall, I didn't really start getting into heavy drugs until I hit Montreal. Okay. I went now, to Montreal to work for the weekend. I've been living there three and a half years, hooked to, hooked to uh, crack cocaine. Oh. Now, have you ever stolen to support your habit for drugs? All the time. All the time. What about you, Nevada? Have you ever stolen to support your habit for drugs? Um, I've stolen, um, twice, and I got caught once, and as I was getting caught, they thought, two months in, I was faking, but I went into a seizure, and they let me go by bringing me to the hospital, so I'm like, okay, that was the savior, <laughs> but the next time, I was with my friend in a wheelchair, and I was like, sorry, it's the metal. Is the metal we melted too many pop cans? We wanted to repair it. It had too many holes. So can I just ask a couple more questions, Patty? Because you now, what is the direction you're going in now? What are you, are you looking to? I'm looking for abstinence. Okay. I'm currently working in mm -hmm. uh, part-time job. I work at Maggie's. Okay. As a harm reduction worker. And which what, what is Maggie's? Maggie's is an organization ran in by sex workers and allies. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we support the the working girls, uh, people with addictions. We have a drop in every Wednesday from two to five. Mm -hmm. Okay, so how helpful has Maggie's really been for you? It's been very helpful. Um, in in order, well, let me see. Let me say this. It's been very helpful in the sense where 
I get, I've gotten all kinds of great support from there. I've met all different sex workers there. Um, it's, it's been amazing. Mm -hmm. Now, 